there we go. All right, okay, so welcome to our session on how to use the library's databases effectively and efficiently. And we are gonna start out in the CDU online library and we're going to go through a guide that was recently posted with tips and tricks. So after this meeting, you can always go back to it. So I'm going to come over here in the library to the database tab here in the library's directory. And I'm going to go to this drop down, this first one, how to search databases. And so most everything you need to know about how to effectively search in a database is found here. And the number one rule to remember is that the databases do not work like a Google search. You cannot enter a question and expect an answer. That when you do that, the, da the database is looking for things that contain all of those words, and it will bring you back hundreds of things that are not relevant to your search. Unlike Google, who looks for those words in combination and what were the most popular things other people clicked on that had those same strings of words. The, um, so we're not gonna enter a question in that data the database box. We're gonna look for words, usually one or two words and we're going to use what are called Boolean operators, the and, or, not, and even and not in some of the databases to combine those words to have an effective search. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to share my whiteboard. If I can figure out where I put it. I have a little thing for everybody to participate and we may have to use chat because I don't know where the whiteboard went. Okay, we're just going to use chat and in chat, if you could tell me what is the worst thing that's ever happened to you when you searched a database. Yes, here in our library. And actually, I pulled up the whiteboard. And so at, on your screen, you will see annotation tools. And you can type or text in there as well. Okay, so uh, Maritza says you get, she gets too many articles. And Carmen says boxes and more boxes are opened and you have no, have no idea where you were or how to exit. Okay. When you say boxes, are you talking, Carmen, are you talking different windows or just many different options? Okay, many different options. All right. I'm going to go. Okay. So if that's the worst thing, can you share with me the best thing that's ever happened when, okay, some items are locked, Shayla said also, and um, okay, and which ones to use, Jennifer says. All right, so what is the best thing that's ever happened or the biggest su positive surprise when you've used a database? Found the book in the first search. Maritza had that happen yesterday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you found, uh, Shayla found an encyclopedia. Oh, good. Jennifer found things that ended up being relevant and helpful. 
finding all the encyclicals in one spot. Oh, finding where help on how to cite. Yes, that's always good. That is always good. Okay, so that makes me feel better that you have had positive experiences in the database. So one of the, um, we're not going to go over it, but if you're stuck, you don't remember, you can come to this guide and you were, there's a video you could watch at another time with quick tips on how to search the database. And the big thing we want to remember is the library's main search box, especially, it's going to search on keywords, author names, subject terms, and titles. So you have to tell it that that is what you want to search for, okay? Otherwise, it's going to be searching everything. This search box, when we're on the library's main page, and we'll go back over here and look at it right here, this is searching everything in the library. Everything that's listed over here in the library's directory or when they're on quick, um, you get these links, or these are the quick links to popular resources. It's searching all of the books and it has its own interface to do that. When you actually get to the actual article, and I think this is what Carmen is talking about, when you move to open that article you're, or that book, you're going to see it in its interface, which sometimes we go directly to those interfaces like the Atla Religion Database or Oxford and find out that they all still operate on subject terms or keywords, but their interfaces look and behave completely different. And so one of the things that has been added in here at the end of this are database tutorial videos. So if you come over here, and for all the video, all the day, different databases that have um, their different interfaces, I have put in quick videos from the database providers on how to search. And this is especially important because we're getting another ebook provider that's through ProQuest, and it will have its own way in there. JSTOR has its own way to search. And I have asked uh, Theology and Religion Online, they are working on videos to share with us. And the Atlas Religion Database, uh, Maritza, it's good for you to know, your students can watch it in Spanish as well as English. Wonderful. Okay. And ProQuest is supposed to be sending me Spanish um, instruction videos as well. So when I'm not available or in the middle of the night or on the weekends, when it's not, not the last two weekends of the month or the last two weekends of the term, there, you, there's always help there. Let's go back to the most important thing with searching a database, and that's finding your key words, okay? Your keywords, if you're not searching by title or by author name, is what you is going to be the most effective tool. And so we are going to watch this video on searching a database right now using keywords. So let me optimize for that. Can everybody see the video? Yes.
Okay. Now, my question is, what did you see in that video? And if you want to turn, um, I was looking at the chat. Um, okay, so Chayla had to go do a, um, had to leave, but Maritza had to leave. So, um, Carmen and Jennifer, tell me what, um, and you can turn your mics on. Since there are just two of us, we can do this more as a conversation if you'd like. So um, tell me what in that video stood out to you. It's Jennifer. Um, I think what stood out was just the the you want to, if you want to narrow down your search, you kind of need to narrow down your words as to, to be more specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you notice in that one that he also said, um, so Carmen said the, the breakdown of words because she's using the chat. So you notice also that, yeah, he broke them down. He found synonyms for them. He um, he took effects and just changed it to effect. He made it singular instead of plural. But then one of my favorite parts of that video is it very discreetly teaches. Um, one of the first things I teach is he came up with a question about his topic of food and fast food. And so that is always the best way when you get your writing prompt from your instructor, um, changing that into a question and then finding keywords. So in, let me move this out of the way. Over here in search strategies, we kind of have the same thing. You want to boil down your topic to the most important words, okay? And we're going to put them in the search databases with, if it's more than one word, you want to put it in quotation marks. Because if it's not in quotation marks, the database is searching for each word as a singular term. So it will return everything with the word covenant and everything with the word theology. Or in this case, you can search for Abraham or Abram or Abrahamic was, I got cut off on there, I believe was on there, and um, Moses or Mosaic. So in this case, your database is gonna search for everything that has the words covenant theology together and has one of these words or one of these words. So I have these examples in here, but we're actually going to go, we're going to take a subject and we're going to come up with keywords and we're going to practice and see what we get. Okay. So if I have this keyword chart here and I'm going to use the examples here, I'm going to look, there is, we're going to work on the bread of life discourse. If you're going to write a paper on that. And it has, um, the other thing we remember on there is that it's also John chapter 6, verse 53. Is, is it 53 that I want? Yeah, or starting with maybe 49. So we have these terms here that we're going to go work with and as well as scripture in the databases. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to search using the broadest search box here because it's going to search everything that we have access. And it's searching over 65,000 titles. Okay. So I am going to start with a subject search on on the Bread of Life discourse. And we're going to see, we see that's a lot of words, but we put them in quotes. So we're going to see what we return here, which I believe is going to be an object lesson of very little. So you can see some, nothing came up. And most likely it is because we have too many terms. So we're going to go back and we're just going to type Eucharist as our subject. And there are 855 results. And if you look, it's going to tell you that this book is shown because it's been tagged with the subject Eucharist. And it's also going to let us see other subject terms. So Lord's Supper is another one if we, if we didn't have that already in our list. And so we see all of these ebooks. And then from here, in this, the, this search that's searching everything in, that the library has access to, you can come over here on the left and narrow it down um, if you want to see articles or you want to see ebooks. We even have an audio book. So how you get to, you know, to narrow down these 855 things, I would, I would use this to find the books and maybe the audio books. When it has these 848 articles, that's going to take a little more work to get that specific get the specificity down to decide which articles are good or work for you. So right now we're going to set those aside and just, um, oh, hang on, hang on, I'm coming in. All right. And you can click to see the ebook. And it's going to take you to whatever platform that the ebook is hosted on. When you get this message to log in, you know that you're getting a source that the library pays for, for you to have rather than an open access source. And so here, this took us to the Atla ebook lending program. Books in this, pro, in this uh, format are, are read only books like you would get from your library and um, using Libby or OverDrive, you have access to them for up to 14 days. And uh, there are instructions if you need them, uh, I can point them out for how to load this a reader for this on your tablet if you want to read them on the tablet. While we're here in this pro in this um, Source, does anybody have any questions about ebooks when you get into the Atlet ebook lending program? If you've been there, so we're good there. So, okay, I'm going to go back over here to our search, and when we want to look for articles. Let's just click and we're going to only see the 848 articles. 
actually it narrowed it down to 613. And if they're full text view, to be sure they're only full text articles, we can click here. And we'll see if it narrows. It's okay. Still keeps the the same six hundred and thirteen. Now, these are six hundred and thirteen. But let's say I want to only talk about ones that are with taught or discuss the Book of John. I can now take and come over here to Advanced Search. Okay, and we have Eucharist, and then we have our Boolean operators, and we can change this to a, instead of title, we can tell it we want the keyword, and we go keyword, and we want John, and we'll search again and see how it narrows it down. It reduces it to 818 overall or 118 overall results. Okay. 124 articles. Only 24 are downloadable. So let's look at those. Okay. And so now we have. Articles. We can see it's it highlights and tells us why it shows us that article. It contains the Gospel of John and it has the Eucharist. Okay, this one is on John's participation. This one pulled it because it talks about John Paul the two, so that may not be the John we want. Same here. When we search through this, as I call it, the broad database, when we go to view full text, every, this is where Carmen probably sees everything is different in how I got here. Because this is searching all sorts of open access um, databases. These are databases of information that have been, ma been made available to us from other institutions from around the world. And so you each one of these can be really difficult. In some cases, you have to learn how to go through and look at the different articles. So I on this particular one, I clicked on the... Um, icon of the book it opened it up and then we have to go through and find the article that was referenced in the in the the search over here the eucharist and the holy trinity so we would have to do another search within this database that is why if we go back to the home page of the library um Maria, I'm just glad you're here. So hopefully you are um, you find this helpful. Because this can be such a broad search and can take some work, this is why we have quick links to other databases, just working in JSTOR, just working in Theology Online, Religion Online, and the Apple Religion Database. And this database interface is one that I want to go and look at with you because when you get used to using something, it, it will become faster. And um, this database, I think, is much easier to use and search directly when you want an article. And it's where most of the articles that we pay for you to have access are stored. And you can see this interface is the same interface that was used on the video that we watched earlier. And we can 
do the same thing that we did earlier. We could do Eucharist and we could change this field to subject. And then we can search. And it's going to come up with 755 articles. However, they are not all full text yet. Um, one thing that's important to remember with the Atla Religion Database is it has its own personal goal to make known to you every religious publication and article around the world. But not all of that has been digitized yet. So some when you see something that doesn't have a PDF full text underneath it, that tells you that's available. It makes, um, if it's just the article you have to have, you know you can't write your paper without it. That's when you email the library and we reach out and see if somebody has that print source they can scan and give us. But to see articles that you can see right now, you come over on the left and you click full text. That's going to reduce it to 200 articles. And see, they all have this PDF full text here that you will, you will click on to search. Now, we want to look for things that talk about John. So we're going to add that. We're just going to add that as an open text field, and it's going to search some more. And it reduces it to 18 articles. But here you can see with John, it also wants to pull in John Paul II's writings on the Eucharist, which may or may not work for the paper you're writing. Okay. And then when you look, you will see that some of these say they're a periodical and some of these are a journal. They are all going to be scholarly. I, I can guarantee you that in this database because that's the only content we subscribe to. It's just this one is probably a shorter article than what you're going to find in an academic journal where it's somebody's research paper. Any questions, thoughts, concerns so far? Or can you share one thing new that you have learned? And you can type that in the chat or you can turn on your. Okay. How to add search fields. Okay. Thank you for that, Carmen. Now I am going to show you my favorite thing about this database. And, um, okay, it's good to know why, I, yes, why some are not full text. And when, when they're not full text, Jennifer, that's called their index. That means they've been, they've let the world know they exist. But what I do is for, um, in my other, Group, professional groups of theological librarians on those listservs when somebody wants an article that we can't find because it's not it's not um, in it's not in digital format and at CDU we don't have space we're not like a while we have what you have in a physical library what we don't have are print collections of journals that get mailed to us every month that you could come into a physical library and look at. And so what I do is I email my theological compatriots and whoever has that article in their physical library will scan it and send us a PDF. So that it's, it's good to have friends. And maybe one day Atla will achieve its goal by having all of these digitized. That's a lot of space though out there in the world in, in the interwebs you might say. Okay so on to my favorite thing about this database and this is what I found most useful when I was doing my theological degree was to learn to search by scripture. Okay 
So I can come up here in this blue bar and I can search by scripture. I click on it and it's going to give me the Bible in canonical order. And so in this case, if I'm talking about the bread of life discourse, I know I want to do John. So I have to just do a little bit of like thumbing through a book by moving until I get to the Old Test or excuse me, the New Testament, then I can come down here to John. Now, if I click on John, it is going to give me every article about that includes something on the Gospel of John. So I'm going to expand John and see the chapters. And I particularly in the Bread of Life discourse want to talk about um, I am the living bread which came down from heaven and if anyone eats of this bread I, he will live forever and the bread which I shall give you give for the life of the world is my flesh so that is John chapter 6 and I'm going to expand it and go down and find verse 51 so this gets that level of granularity that I can go down and find every article in here there are 310 that discuss john 6 51 okay and then if i reduce them to full text there are still 100 articles in here So at that point, then I look at, okay, reading the fourth gospel. I start looking at the titles, and then I look at the subjects. So this one's incarnation. This one's Christological. This one is um, biblical criticism. So I kind of start looking through here and say, okay, here's that term again, the Last Supper, okay, or bread. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to type in bread, and I'm going to leave it blank, and it's going to search all of these different things. We're going to see if it reduces it any. It reduces it to 16 articles. That's a little more manageable. Okay. So, and then I can say, well, this one's a periodical. And this one, and I can look and see the name. Okay. This one's Wesleyan Theological Journal. So that's a Methodist journal. Okay. Concordia Theological Quarterly. And that is the other thing. Sometimes I get students who get upset and say, well, that's not a Catholic article. Well, that's okay. You can still use it for your research because one, it will help you learn if they, if the Wesleyan theology thinks the same way about this discourse as Catholic theology. And if it does, you can you know, you can commend that or however you want to talk about it. You can show how the religions think alike, but you can also, if it thinks differently, you can express in your paper why its convergence, you know, might not have the whole truth of what Christ is saying or, you know, just explaining how it differs and what that's lacking in the deposit of faith. That's one's from the Presbyterians. So if anybody sees anything in this list that they have a question about or want to know more about, like let's look at this article and I just want to be sure everybody knows what can, can happen from here once you find an article. So let's say I decide that article number nine, Eucharist or Christology, is one I want to review more. 
I come, if I, if I click here on its title, it's just going to give me bibliographic information. I want to come down here and click on this PDF full text link to see it. Okay. It's a 27 page article. I might not have time to read all 27 pages because I've got to find say four or five more resources. So how do I determine if I want to invest my, more time in this article? I look at its title. I look to see if it has an introduction. This one obviously has a lot of footnotes and it is not unusual that the best thing you find in an article is a footnote to another source that's the, really the source that works for you. So always look through them. And this article right now I can tell you I struggle with because it has more footnotes on a page than it has text on the first two one, uh, first two pages. Doesn't mean it's a bad article, but it, I know it's gonna be very deep and technical. So a lot of times I just, if there are su subject heads in there or section heads, I skim those, or I just kind of skim read the first um, sentence of each paragraph. And then I look at the footnotes. And if it has a conclusion at the end, so I'll go through, oh, so we saw section heads in there. So this breaks down the terms flesh and blood. That could be important to my discussion. And I just work my way through the article looking at um, section heads, first lines, and if there was an introduction or a conclusion, I would look through those. If I say, think, yes, this article is going to work for me, I am going, I have the option to download it to my computer or to print it. You can also download it to your Google Drive if you use Google Drive or your OneDrive if you use that. Once again, you can print it. Uh, you can email yourself a link. The other thing you want to do before you leave is get your citation. And your citation is this yellow, looks like a piece of yellow paper down here. If you click on it, it's going to open up the citations and there are many citations formats in here because this is a global resource you want to scroll down to Chicago notes and bibliography this is the format that aligns with the um, excuse me Turabian Turabian is actually the student version of Chicago 17th edition. And you can just highlight this and copy it. Like I can right click with my mouse, copy it, and then paste it into a document for you to have your bibliography entry. Then you can go back to your results list. Any questions here or thoughts? Or do you feel you'll be you'll be able to conduct a better database search? Because at this point, I am going to stop and ask you what you would like me to demonstrate how to search for. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to try to find? Okay, Plato's thoughts about the soul. 
Okay. Before before I just do an article search on that, are you in your class? Are you using a particular book on Plato? Okay, Plato's Republic. Okay, all right. So let's go over here. And I'm going to do the subject. And I'm going to type Plato's Republic. And I put it in quotation marks to keep the words together. And I'm going to start with this very broad search to see what it brings up. Okay. So in a very broad search, it's going to come up with... Um, couple of articles here, Interpretive Direction in Plato's Republic. This one is in Spanish. So that's another thing. With these sources, they're global, plus the fact that we are expanding our holdings for Spanish-speaking students. So with, let me show you what I did. You can scroll down to the bottom and tell it you only want English if you don't read Spanish or the other languages that things come up. So we have just on Plato's Republic as a subject, and that's still another Spanish one. We come up with a one full text article. That doesn't mean that's all out there because that's all we, we searched, okay? And um, this is from the... Um, Department of Open Access Journals. And I am not seeing the article that it, then it comes up and doesn't show me the article. But don't, don't despair. This is just searching here. And like I said, I searched on subject. The other thing I know as your librarian, is I'm gonna go back to the library and Atla, is mainly when we look here that's more on religion for plato's republic i would want to look at a source that is more based in the humanities so i'm going to come to jstor for plato's republic okay and when we we initially search we are searching all of the open access content that you can um, download for free. So I'm going to search Plato's Republic in here. And it's going to give me 677 articles in open content that are going to discuss Plato's Republic. So within this search, I want to look at things that talk about the soul. So I'm going to come over here on the left and search for it within these results on the soul and hit enter. And it reduces it to 296 articles. Um, But so it's going to take you a little bit of work to then say, well, I there are book chapters or journal articles. Let's look at book chapters right now since there's only 32 of them. And once again, you kind of have to go through and review and look at the book. So these are book chapters. So I'm looking at the book chapter that this is from, 
or the, the title of the book that this is from. And I'm going to read the little blurb. And if you see anything that jumps out at you with what you want, let me know because I can't always read your mind <laughs> on, what, on exactly what you're thinking about writing. That's time. So the in this one the little blurbs are really the most helpful. I'm gonna go back up to This one here and the political role of poetry. But he's going to talk about the goods of the soul. A uh, one that says the political. Is, is this the same one, the political role of poetry? Okay, good. All right. So you can download this article. It's open access. So that means it's made freely available to you. Um, you can get your citation right here, but to where um, we can click on it, that's title, and it's going to open it up. So you can see it in this viewer to look through it. And um, I'm going to put this link in here for you. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Yeah, just a minute. I'll show you how to. Um, okay, so there's a link in the chat for you to get back to it. But to print it, what you're going to do is you're first going to download it to your computer. I'm going to accept the download. And then whatever your PDF viewer is, it will show up. I'll give it a minute. And then from there, you can print the article. Okay. You can also come over here and get your citation. And this one, it just has Chicago. So here it is. And you can copy it out and paste it to your to your document. Okay. Before we wrap up, because we're coming up to time, I'm gonna come back over here and show you a couple of things. Um, and over here, where we first started out to find how to search databases, underneath this is JSTOR, or using JSTOR. And in here, I highly recommend that everyone go to this tab and find out how to, um, you can set up a free personal account with JSTOR. And what that lets you do is while you can only download and print open content, JSTOR is really huge and you can you set up a personal account for free, you can read, have read only access to up to a hundred articles per month. And so that's a good benefit to you. Even when you um, finish your education at CDU, you can keep that free JSTOR account and have access when you need articles for work in the humanities. The other thing that was over here is one of our first things we pulled up was an ebook. And here under ebooks is a drop down with the instructions for how to 
download the ebook app and read them on your digital device. Some people prefer to read them on their tablet or even their phone. So that's how you can set that up. So we are at time. Um, I hope everybody has learned something new and useful and feels more secure about using databases. Do we have any last minute questions? Okay. Well, I'm glad you found your, this a good use of your time, or I hope you did. As we close out the meeting, you will receive, uh, it'll pop up automatically in your browser, an anonymous survey. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, what you would like to see in the future. And I will also post the recording for um, future reference, but also remember everything, um, pretty much everything I talked about is in this guide how to search databases and including video tutorials on how to use each of the different databases that hit those that have provided us with tutorials. So that can help when you're, you're crunched for time and the library is not available. So I hope you have a great evening and look forward to seeing you soon, especially those of you in Theo 105 who I'll be talking with you next week about your pro, um, research projects. So have a good week and a good weekend and I'll see you later.